Thank you, team. God is good. Let's pray for the little ones and invite them downstairs. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your presence in our midst. Truly, truly, there is nothing better than you. Lord, thank you for all of the provisions, Lord, the salvation, Father, in your, in your Son, eternal security. Lord, the provision of family, the, the family, biological, and the community of God. Thank you for this family. And thank you for the children. Lord, may your hand be upon them. May the seed of life in Jesus Christ grow stronger every day in their lives. Let prepare the way before them so that they can be ambassadors and witnesses of the living God. Bless the teachers, bless their time, and bless us here as well. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So little ones and kids, you can go downstairs, please. Well, good morning, y'all. And out there in YouTube land. ¿Qué pasa? Mi nombre es Pablo. So un mensaje en español, a message in español. I'm telling you, one of those days I'm going to go for it. So before we start, though, uh, <laughs> there's a couple of you that will follow from A to Z for sure. But before we start, um, Bob, where's Bob? We have a kind of a family business announcement here. As long as, as, long as there's subtitles, we'll be fine with it. So <laughs> go for it. Um, has anybody checked out the bulletin today? An amazing plethora of information and stuff going on. Get senior moments today. Um, we've got, hey, got a big breakfast coming up, guys. Steak and eggs. Uh, we've got a bake sale. Woohoo! We've got a bridal shower. Way to go, Rochelle. Congratulations. But right in the middle there, there's a kitchen shower. Now, I don't know if you've been following along in the e news uh, new email that comes out, but we've been doing a kitchen refresh the last few weeks. We've cleaned out a bunch of stuff. We found things with expiration dates way, 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 way long ago. <laughs> I mean, pre-COVID, pre-GC, <laughs> pre all sorts of things in there that it's like, wow. So we've cleaned out a lot. We've cleaned up a lot. And now we're bringing in some new stuff that actually doesn't look incredibly disgusting to cook food on. So, <laughs> yes. You guys don't mind. We'll eat it anyway. But seriously, it was pretty awful. So out in the lobby today, we are having a shower for the kitchen. There's all sorts of stuff that you can contribute to if you want to. It's not a silent auction. You don't get this stuff. But... If you want, there'll be a box for donations. If you want to help sponsor some ladles or sponsor a griddle or something like that, there'll be a box for donations. There will be cookies for those of you that donate because we'll be watching. So that's <laughs> today right after church. Thank you all so much. This is the kind of stuff that keeps our church looking amazing with everybody helping out. So thank you. Amen. You're bad. And that's the end of the Bob Grinsell Show. <laughs> Amen. I love it. I love it. I love to be a part of this family. Um, so we are, we're finishing together today the, the gospel of Mark. Praise the Lord. Uh, and the, the, the focus or the text is about his commission and ascension. So he has risen. Amen. So before he ascends, he gives us a charge. So we'll be talking about that, and that charge is still active. And uh, the thing is that it's active until he comes back. And you know what? He promises that he will come back. Jesus is coming back. Can I get an amen? Regardless, regardless of your eschatology, as Jeff would say, which is the study of the end of times, regardless of what Jesus is coming back. Amen? Amen. All right, good. So uh, the heart of the message is I've been preparing and as I've been praying for you, for us. Really, the heart of it is to, to provoke, uh, to encourage, and to invite the church, us, 
to fan the flame of the gospel in you. And at the end, I've, I've prayed about it. I just went back and forth with the Lord. It's like, Lord, I, don't let it be me, my emotional desire. <clears throat> but I ask him for an impartation today. I don't know if you read one of the songs that we were singing, you know, the, to lay down the old flame and pick up the new fire. That's pretty much it. And um, so, and I don't know exactly, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll I, I believe it's designed to unlock. Listen, God is God. And I praise God that God is God and we're not. Right? He doesn't have to satisfy your reasoning. <laughs> He's asking for your faith. Do you believe that I can? Even though you've been asking for years, do you believe that the day could be the day? He's God. Timing belongs to him. And who are we? Although he gives us permission to say, but Lord. But he is Lord. So at the end, we'll, we'll pray, and that's what's, what's in my heart. Okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Uh, turn into your Bibles, and I do have the slides on Mark 16, verses 14 through 20. And I would like to read that first, and I'm reading out of the NIV. And then we'll read it all together, and then go back, okay, and share some thoughts as, as I was uh, breaking it down. Lord, what is it that you want to comment out of this verses, Okay. Actually, let's just ask him again. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, please, Lord, uh, we adore you. We thank you. We need you. You are our, di our dialysis. We need you in, <laughs> for survival, for breathing. In you, we live, we move, we have our being. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you, God, for authoring scriptures, for inspiring writers years back. To write down your heart and how you have preserved your word through history. It's been attacked. It's been persecuted. It's been tossed in flames of fire. But it's still here. And what we have in our, our hands is the undefiled, the undeniable word of God. Infallible, powerful, transformational word of God. Thank you for that gift. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to each and every one of us, individually and together. And we ask this in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. So starting in verse 14, later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. And this signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink, drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people. And they will get well. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven. And he sat down at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. Okay? So let's just go back. Let's just uh, so start in verse 14. So just think about it. <laughs> so the Lord is risen. And he appears to the eleven. I just love the Lord Jesus Christ, his leadership style, who he is. He's the head of the church. He's our leader. He's our champion. He's our disciple. He's our mentor. He's our friend. He's our God. Look it. He's up. And 
teaching, correcting, and fanning the flame of faith. So he rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe. So the definition of rebuke, <laughs> sharp disapproval, reprimand, criticism, of an action or a behavior. That's the definition. But without context, it sounds harsh. But in the context of relationship, in the context of discipleship, in the context of mission as the body of Christ, rebuke is vital. It's imperative. So first, for the lack of faith. So, lack of faith, when we allow fear to enter and stay. It's like, you know, when, when you unplug an electrical appliance, you unplug it, it ain't going to work. It is designed to work and operate when it's plugged. That's faith. So Jesus rebuked disciples before. In Mark 8, poor Peter. Well, we say poor Peter. Oh, you're the son of the living God. And then a couple of moments later after he had said, Jesus had said that he needed to go to the Jerusalem and die on the cross. Peter said, oh, no. Oh, no. No, that cannot be the plan. And he said, get behind me, Satan. That's, that's a rebuke. That's a correction. And then in Mark 4, after he calmed the storm, remember? All disciples were freaking out. He rebuked them again for the lack of faith and unbelief. And when you look in the book of Revelation, there's a chapter on the churches. Seven of the churches in Revelation are there. Five of them were rebuked for the lack of faith. Second, he rebuked them for their stubbornness, refusal to believe. That requires a heart check. Because in a moment, we could doubt for a second, praise the Lord, that he redirect us. But there's a stubbornness. The definition is obstinate, strong-willed, refusal to change one's mind or course of action. So they were saying that witnesses, stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Witnesses testifying of what Jesus said was going to happen. It wasn't even their own story. They were witnessing to what he said was going to happen. Jesus told the disciples three times that he was going to die. And that at the third day, he would rise again. A couple of questions for us to consider, consider right off the bat. First, are there areas in our hearts that we're still stubborn towards the word of God? Where we could be exalting our opinion or others' opinions or our reasoning higher than the word of God? Or is our faith grounded according to scripture? Grounded in the fact that there's a supernatural God who's sovereign and all powerful and for whom there's nothing impossible. Amen, brother. That's my God too. So the second question, because if, if there are... An, I understand that we're all growing. I understand that there's a process of maturation. But that's a good heart check. Are there things in the natural that I'm seeing and therefore my reasoning is exalting that as fact higher than the Word of God? And if you self-check that, go to your Creator and God about it. Lord, I'm struggling with this in my heart. 
Would you let the truth shine in here? I give my reasoning, my opinions, and what I see and believe to you. Let me be grounded in you. Amen? Okay. At the end of the day, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is God-breathed, and it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, uh, and training in, in, in God's righteousness. So, are there hearts, areas in our hearts that are stubborn? And then the second question is, how do you, how do we, how do we handle rebuke? How do you handle rebuke? Do you self-justify? Oh, well, it's, you know, I'm me, you're you. Or you submit to the authority of the Word of God. I remember, you know, I'm thinking about David and Nathan. David the king. Bathsheba, he did what was incorrect, sinful. And the prophet Nathan came and pointed to him with the truth. And immediately he repented. He didn't self-justify. And he was a king. Right? How do we handle rebuke? I need rebuke from the word of God in my life. I need, that's the GPS, reset, recomputing, you're going south, back to north, recompute. I need that rebuke in my life. So get beyond you if you struggle as I have to get beyond me. It's not about me, right? It's about God through and in me. Okay, then verse 15, he said, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. So three things, go, the preach, and then the gospel. Go, preach, the gospel. So go, it's a command, present tense, still in force and active. And it's just amazing to me that that is a go. We are commanded to go. We're going. The mission of the church is to advance the gospel as a kingdom family. We're going. And I'm grateful that I'm, because the go, when he said to them, go, there were 11 of them, the representation of the church. He didn't say, let me have a one-on-one -on -one with you all. To all, go. And I praise God that we don't have to go alone. We could go together. It's, a, it's an individual and a together as a church. Bring your gift to that call. Bring it to the table. Preach. Go, preach. It's an infinitive verb. I wasn't very good at grammar. But it preach presents... An action as a concept rather than a specific action of a subject. Preach, which generally is defined as proclaim, teach, or advocate. But it's more than that. It's a transmission, spiritual emission of the saving power of God in you through you to others. It's not only through words or the proclamation that that's traditionally preaching, but it's through your life that God can speak to people. We are living epistles sent to places, peoples, and groups. No coincidence that you work where you work, that God put you in the family that you're in. 2 Corinthians 2 says that you know that you are and we are an aroma? Even without speaking, there's an aroma. Think about coffee in the morning. Although I don't drink coffee, but I love the aroma. But the Bible says, to those that are perishing, we are a dreadful smell of death and doom. But to those who are being saved, pre-Christians, that God's got them all over in their hands. Those that are being saved, we are life 
giving perfume without you even opening your mouth you are emitting an aroma right St. Francis of Assisi in the early 1200s we've heard this coin he coined the phrase preach the gospel at all times and use words if necessary go preach the gospel so let me explain what the gospel is it's a gift right what it is but what's in it <laughs> so I think what it is and you can move it to the next slide it is a plan it is a plan from eternity it is an event in history so it's planned event achieve, achievement free offer application bringing us back a plan from eternity the gospel before the foundation of the world God in his mind had the gospel it was an event in history recorded in history 2,000 plus year ago Jesus entered this planet as a man and died without sinning once historical event an event it's an achievement the gospel is an achievement through that event sin was paid for atoned for righteousness was completed in that event it's a free offer that is extended to all to the world if it wasn't free it wouldn't be grace if there was something you or me could add to it it would not be free totally because of him the application of the achievement achievement the gospel applied in you we have been forgiven and justified hallelujah we are given up the Spirit of God in us that begins a transformational process the gospel is alive in you and me today it's changing you you're not the same you were and it's not done yet but the app the, the justification and forgiveness is not the end game the end game is that it could bring it brings us the gospel brings us back to God God is our treasure for 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 God so loved the world we don't have an idea of what love is the, the I give praises to God for who he is for the love he for his heart his character his commitment his goodness his relentlessness he is love and he wants us back and with that fervor I pray for my unbelieving unsaved family members and friends with that passion let them taste and see that you are so good amen but that's the gospel what what's in it what's in the gospel is the power Romans 1 says the power of God unto salvation the power undefiled unlimited power of God unto salvation the Holy Spirit manifestation of God's power through the gospel that's when the supernatural meets the natural via the faith channel it ignites life amazing to me a biblical example of the power of God when the supernatural meets the natural remember on Mark 6 you know Jesus walking on water and the disciples were afraid because they were focusing focusing on what on the natural right and then the supernatural Jesus comes walks by and meets them and say hey take courage it's me and then Peter asks for permission to enter that supernatural realm and Jesus says come on in 
and he does enter it. To me, that's a picture-perfect example of our current invitation state to partner with Jesus through his gospel. When you look at meanings in scripture, water has many, many meanings. One of them is chaos and disorder. Genesis 1-2, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over waters. There's chaos and disorder in this world. Would you agree? And Jesus, through his gospel, is inviting us to walk over the water with him. Verse 16, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. A couple of quick comments on this one. The comment is on baptism. Okay, there are some that believe that baptism is necessary for salvation. Also known as bat baptismal regeneration. Scripture doesn't support that. Otherwise, think about the thief on the cross. Baptism is an important step of obedience for a Christian. And each and every Christian should be water baptized by immersion. We're thinking about another water baptism party in our, in our house here. So if you're not baptized, man, I invite you to, you know, reach out to Josh. Um, yeah, it's a public declaration that illustrates what has happened in your heart that you have identified with Christ's death, that you and I died with him. We were buried with him, and we have risen in him. I no longer give, live, but Christ lives in me. That's, that's what that illustrates. Now, verse six, uh, the second part of that is that whoever does not believe will be condemned. I, one of the first is I became a, a Christian as an adult. So boy, there was a lot of cleansing that the Holy Spirit needed to do. And I think because I was just so lost that he was graceful. And that I had amazing experiences right off the bat with the Holy Spirit. I mean, uh, the presence, an amazing presence. And then after a while, it kind of, but I think he knew that I needed it at that time. I mean, where I would just drop on my knees and pray, there was just a little light by the nightstand in there. And when you have your eyes closed and you feel like someone is walking by, you know, like the, the shadow, and, and I opened my eyes and there was nobody. And, but there was no fear, there was peace. And God began to speak, he speaks to me with pictures. And one of the first pic pictures he's, that I got, it was like I was, it was I, I, high in space. I was in space looking at the world. And the, and the world cracked open like an eggshell there. And through the middle, there was a huge, um, like a con conveyor belt. I don't know, if, you know, the auto walk that you see in airports. You know, people just jump and they, they, you know. And, and I saw that towards the end of that, people were falling off. And I saw on the side of the conveyor belt, people just grabbing, you know, going, standing, talking to people, talking to people, talking to people. They would fall off. They would... Talking to people, talking to people, talking to people. And then later, I, I recognized what it was. It's about the gospel message and our role in it. Now, we know John 3.16. Who knows? Who remembers 17 and 18? Well, well you Bible students, you. Right. For God did not send his son, 17, in the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed. You're on the auto conveyor belt. 
We have been rescued for that. The actual, the reality is that all of us deserves hell. Ooh, pastor, you're strong. No, I'm, I'm biblical. All have, fall, uh, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Oh, but I'm good. That's filthy rags before the justice of God. You and I need to understand that we have been redeemed and saved. Hallelujah. And now we are called to go together. Okay? Lord, slow the... Okay, here we go. 17. And this signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. They will drink deadly poison. It will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on the sick and they will get well. These two verses have traditionally presented some interpretational challenges. Let me just say like this. The key theme in these two verses are signs. And let me just first say that according to Scripture, signs are there always to confirm the message of God and not the messenger. This distorted people that have distorted this verse and it happened um, in the 1950s in West Virginia the church began to use as a ritual snake handling to show to unbelievers that they were protected by God and they were true believers you know the Bible says do not put the Lord your God to test Trying to force God's hand by requiring him to perform a miracle like that, it's just more than foolish. It's sinful. Okay? The action described in this text is the ministry to people that are both spiritually and physically oppressed by sin and the devil. Okay? All that are going, in context, go. All that are going, believers and disciples of Jesus, preaching the gospel. In my name, they will drive out demons. Listen, I've been hearing, I follow this one minister out of California. He's having 10 meetings already. In a, but of course, you're not going to hear it through the media. In collaborations with churches, there's a unity. There's people coming together to go together. They're having amazing things happen, and I'm seeing documentation of it. Gang bangers, gang tossing, coming to the altar, tossing drugs. Putting it all in there. Tell me that there's not a transference from the dominion of darkness into his marvelous light. <laughs> the gospel, those that preach the gospel... In my name will drive out. They will speak new tongues. Not just the gift of the spirit in tongues. I Listen. It's language. A language that is biblical and spiritual versus natural and carnal. The Bible says the tongue can bring death or life. When the word of God flows through your mouth. That's kingdom language. That's kingdom tongue that brings life to someone. Regarding then the picking up snakes and drinking deadly poison, it's not prescribing that we do that. It's a figure of speech to affirm a spiritual truth. What these things represent, you know, the, the, the snake and, and poison... In the spirit, what they represent, it's saying that it could be through the gospel, opposed and crushed. There are two interpretation rules, two biblical interpretations. One is the law of the first mention. Basically, a word or a concept, the first time it appears in the Bible, that's where it provides the simplest and clearest presentation of that word or concept. For snake is on Genesis 3. And who represents that snake? The devil. Okay? Referring to Satan himself. The other rule is let scriptures interpret scripture. So when you read a Luke, when you read Luke 10, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. 
That's talking about the spiritual warfare and opposition from the enemy through the people that you're ministering to. Matthew, I'm sending you all like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be shrewd as snakes and innocent as doves. Jesus has given us authority to overcome hostile creation. Represented by serpents, scorpions. And the enemy will use people to spew spiritual poison in our faces. We're partnering with God in the conflict of the ages. Between light and dark. God, evil. Right? But greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. And then 18, verse 18. Place their hands on sick people. Spiritually and physically and they will get well. As we go, we pray. That's what we do. God takes care of the rest. His timing is his. When and how he decides to heal is his. We pray. That's what we do. When we go, we pray. That's what we do. Okay? 19. After the Lord Jesus has spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompany it. I love it. Christ is sitting down. Implies authority. The king is sitting. It is finished, God. It is finished. It is, he's sitting down. He's not striving. It's sitting, sitting down. And then he gave us his permission, authority, power. And he ongoingly intercedes for us so that the victory is assured and guaranteed in Christ through his gospel. So receiving that call means that we live our lives trusting the God of the universe who is bigger than anything around us. A trust that, we, that, that knows that we serve a supernatural God who sticks his hand into the natural world to help those who follow him and to bring his purposes to pass. He's coming back soon. Two more minutes. As much as I try to condense it, that's my struggle. Amen. Thank you, brothers. I love y'all. Okay, so by 1.30, we should be good. All right. All right, all right, all right. So let me just then land it like this, the outline. So after reading this text, there's three key points that I want to... Um, could you get to the last uh, slide, please? What I love about that picture... It represents the heart, the childlike heart of a gospel messenger. When you see that picture, you don't feel threatened. You know, it's inviting. So, the key points, church, as we go, listen, we're in a season of going. We're going to amp it up. We're talking with... Uh, some pastors in the city and, and, and the elders and Josh and meet with some pastors and now that it's going to be spring, summer and you know we are we're planning and pray for us. Let's let's go out, man. Let's let's outreach. Let's let's go outside of the walls together. It doesn't have to be a big to do that. I, whatever. Let's just go out in the midst of the. Let's just go. I, we're excited about going. But. To be effective, there's what I call, you know, the gospel ingestion. The gospel inside of you and inside of me, it's internal. That's the gospel of Jesus that saved you. That is active, alive, transforming you. And it makes you a personal witness of the great power of God working in us. That's why we're not ashamed of the gospel. Because we can see what it's doing in us. It's the power of God unto salvation. And then when you hear the gospel, when, when Jesus talks to the church and says, go. Then that gospel in you, when they hear, it hears the word go, it just gets up in the insights and says, let me out. 
regardless if you're afraid, if you feel inadequate, we commit by taking risks. Why? Because we know that there's no greater answer than the gospel. It's all sufficient. I don't care what the issues of the world, our lives, family, the gospel is more than enough. The expression, the gospel expression. I picture a fruit basket. And the, the, the basket is a big old basket and it says love. And then you see all the fruits in there. And the gospel is a little chocolate heart in the middle. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's how we express it. The gift of the Spirit in the Spirit by the fruit of the Spirit with gentleness and respect. We offer that precious gospel. And then when we proclaim it, we have confidence in the gospel. It is the power of God. God uses, listen, God uses the gospel to save sinners. It's sufficient. It bears fruit. It is our highest calling. There's nothing else that could deliver or save people that are afflicted by the ills of society and a fallen world infected by sin. There's no other answer but the gospel. Amen. Um, can we stand before I pray? I, and pray, as, as I mentioned, we're going to, we're going to, we've been talking with pastors and, and with the elders talking. We just have a sense that in August, we want to have a, we want to throw a party, a block party out there. I don't know how that's going to look like. Let's just throw a party, man, and invite people. Come on, hey, you want to come to a party? Yeah, come on. I don't know how that's going to look. I just, it's in the spirit. Are you, are you down for throwing a party, a block party? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's do it. Let's do it. So pray about that. And if the Lord drops things in you, how you can bring your gift to it. I could help and minister. You know, who knows? I'm praying that just a little work group committee forms out of that. I don't know. Let's throw a party. Let's see what the Lord could do. Amen? Um, so here's the thing. Oh, thank you for your grace. I just want to pray a prayer of unlocking, an impartation. And I know I've gone over. I've transgressed. But if I'm going to transgress, I'm going to transgress big. <laughs> so, Kans, could you just, you know, do a little. Is she here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, oh, stay, this is what my, so we are going to lay down the old flame and, and we want to pick up the fire of God. The invitation is not to point people out or to make you feel uncomfortable because you will receive the unlocking whether you're at home watching, if you stay down there. But I want to open the altar. I just, just because you feel that it's like, Lord, I, I just need you. I just need it. And I want to like baptism, right? It's a public declaration and confession. So because we're family, we're in a safe zone. So the altar is open. And you can come in now. You can, you know, if you want to. I'm not going to. But if you stay st sitting, standing there, that's fine. So I'll just let the Holy Spirit do what he wants to do. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, in Jesus' name, here we are, Lord, your people. I thank you for this community of believers. Yesterday was fabulous, Lord. <laughs> to see generations of believers that have walked through these doors. And God, I just can only imagine how you feel when you, throughout history, generations of your children. And how blessed you are when, as a family, they come together to address you as Abba. 
Abba, you're, you're our Lord, you're our Father, and we bless your name. We just so bless your name. Lord, I thank you for the call of God in our lives. Lord, I thank you. I, I could have never imagined, I, could, I really could have never imagined that your grace and your mercy and your compassion and your goodness and your kindness would be so beautiful that, that Lord, that you would captivate my heart in such a way. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you are real, that the gospel is alive and active, Lord. It's like, a, it's like a pebble in a pond that ripples are going through history. Even now, God, salvation, gospel is entering in the lives of people. I just thank you. And, Lord, we want to join what you're doing. We desire to be, to receive your call with courage. But we receive it together. We don't have to be long rangers in this call. It's a we thing. So I thank you, Lord, that you use us, the foolish things to confound the world. There's others that are, are a lot more eloquent, are a, a lot better equipped with the talents and gifts. But Lord, this way you show your glory brighter. When you use just regular people like me. I pray in Jesus' name that this time, this act before you would be honoring and pleasing, but the Lord that you would use it to activate. I pray in the name of Jesus for a flip, for an activation. I pray, God, for an impartation of the Holy Spirit in each and every heart of the believer under the sound of my voice. I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, that you would show the call clear, clear, that it would be received and powered by your spirit, that you would encourage and activate people. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would begin to orchestrate the divine appointments that you have laid out in each and every one of our lives. And together, I pray, God, that those that need to be rescued and drawn out of that conveyor belt, God, would be done, would be so that you would use us, Lord, as messengers of the gospel, we are praying to the Lord of the harvest. God, I pray for a fresh anointing. I pray for a fresh fire that would fall, that would fill the hearts of your people. I pray that the gospel would come left and right. Lord, that we would be outstanding in making transitions from the timber wolves and the Vikings to Jesus Christ. I pray, God, that you would equip us in such a fabulous way that we would be anointed, that the aroma and the fragrance of life, perfume, would be so in us, God, that it would emit, 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 emit the flavor, the flavor, the aroma of the gospel. I pray, Lord, that you would use us in a mighty way, in the simplest things, to the bigger things, whatever you want. Here we are. So we thank you. We believe it. We receive it. And we give all of the honor and the glory to you, our King. And it is to you that we pray. In the name of Jesus. And the church says, I bless you and I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for standing. It's hard when we follow some protocols. But I think God is asking us to step outside of the boat. That those things that we look at frames of references that have blessed us. Amen. I blessed us before. Hallelujah. But we cannot put the Holy Spirit in a corner. We cannot do that. He's the, he's the leader. Amen. Amen. I love you all, man. In Jesus Christ, I love you. Have a blessed week. And, you know, we're going to linger around. And cans, if you can keep it, you know, let's just uh, soak into this. But I want to be respectful too. So I bless you in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you, keep you. Make his glorious face shine upon you. And give you peace. Amen. Have a good afternoon, brothers.